Hello, booktube! Uh, my name's Michelle, the bookworm. Um, I've been gone for about a minute. Um, as you can see, my backdrop has changed. Uh, we, uh, my roommates uh, bought a house and my boyfriend and I decided to move with them. So, we now have our own bigger room, which is completely awesome. Um, I've also started a new job. So a lot of nice, positive life changes. Um, but I have been reading, and in this video I would like to share with you one of the books that I've recently finished. It's called The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather Meal. Um, this book follows two orphans um, who named Rose and Pierrette. Pierrette. Um, who were abandoned in a Montreal orphanage in the winter of 1910. And this novel is about their horrible experience in that orphanage and kind of how their lives um, grew afterwards. Um, they were separated, and but they found each other again through their mutual love of the arts. Um, and throughout their lives they end up losing each other, they end up losing themselves, but they never, like, lose touch on this dream that they had where they are, um, they created this circus, um, in their, in their heads. Growing up they had created this little dream of having a circus, so that kind of gets them going throughout the entire novel. Um, so this, I would like to mention that this is a review. This is not going to be a critique, which means that there is no spoilers. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be talking about aspects of this book that I found interesting. Um, first I'd like to discuss the characters. Um, there are two main characters, Rose and Pirate. Um and so Rose is this ordinary looking girl. She has fair skin, she has black hair, and she has black eyes. But one extraordinary feature about her is that when it gets really cold, she has like really bright pink cheeks um, that everyone says makes her astoundingly pretty. Um, she's frequently compared to a doll throughout this novel, which I find it fits the time period of this novel. Um, she's, as a character, she's very introspective. She lives inside her own world, but she's able to bring her world out to others through her performance. Um, she does acting, um, she does a lot of, her talent is acting and improv. Um, she's really good at making a character and creating that character's personality and scenario right on the spot. Um, and over time she even begins to use like props and stuff well throughout her performances. Um, she's kind of like, in the orphanage, she's kind of like the older sister to the other children. This is a very bleak time where children were kind of cast off because families couldn't afford them anymore. So orphanages were just filled with these children who were abandoned by their parents and she was the mother figure for everybody and told them stories and kind of made them feel like this was home. Um, Pierrette, Pierrette, um, Pierrette, I keep messing up his name, um, is definitely more charismatic. He's this blonde haired, blue eyed, very, um, extroverted type character. He's very tall and, and skinny, and he's very forthwith. He talks very eloquently, and he talks with a wide vocabulary to make people think that he's extremely well-educated. Um, 
even when he's kind of like an ignorant, like an idiot. Um, they frequently refer to him as a brilliant fool, and he, but really he just loves language and he loves sounding smarter than he really is. Um, but he's also really good at theatrics and acrobatics, and he can do backflips and front flips and cartwheels and that kind of thing. Um, and he's really good at charades. Um, another big talent that was actually encouraged in his youth was that he was extremely good at piano, not necessarily reading music, but he was really, he could pick out a tune and play it by ear. Um, the, there are quite a few major themes throughout this novel. It is set dirt, like right before the Great Depression. So during this time, people were having to give up their children so that they, because they just couldn't afford to have that many children. Um, and this, this setting added a layer of difficulty to the plot. It, it made it so that the children had to leave, lead a life of hardship after they, even after they left the orphanage. Um, and their impoverished circumstances led them to do acts that they possibly wouldn't have had to do unless they were in desperate circumstances. Um, both uh, led a life of crime in order to um, survive and cope throughout this time. and. Um, they both experienced, um, distinct trauma, um, either from their childhood, from being abandoned, from growing up in the orphanage, to life after the orphanage, um, and these traumatic situations that happened, like, during their childhood and throughout their lives stayed with them and, um, formed them into the characters that they ended up being. Um, both coped with their trauma and and their circumstances in very different ways. Um, but the biggest theme that I think that this story has is love, which is one of the reasons I wore this shirt. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it. But the forefront theme of this novel is love. This is a love story about two children who grew up together and, you know, were really good friends and ended up losing each other and finding each other again. Um, so I'd like to talk about the writing style of this novel. I really liked it. It was very fast-paced. So, like, there wasn't a whole lot of filler within the novel. It, but it wasn't, like, it had its ups and downs. And it definitely had, something was constantly going on. But I didn't feel like there was constant plot twists. You know what I mean in those stories where there's just, like, this random plot twist that you have no idea where it came from? It doesn't have that. Um, personally, I absolutely hate books that are like that, but that's just my opinion. Um, it also has multiple points of view, so throughout the novel we are frequently hearing from uh, Pirret and Rose, but you also get to see points of view from other characters within the novel, particularly those who are actually actively uh, preventing these two from coming together and finding each other again, which I find extremely interesting. It's like you get to see from even the villain's perspective. And the way that the these two describe each other is so sweet and so interesting and it adds like another layer to the character's personality. Like, not only you get to learn about these characters from how they think about themselves, 
but also how they think about each other. Um, this book is a constant mystery. You're constantly rooting for them to find each other, and it's, it's so frustrating because there are times when they, like, barely miss each other, and you, the reader, know that they barely miss each other, but they don't. <laughs> it was agonizing for her for quite a bit, in a good way. Um, and, and you're constantly rooting for these two to come together and, and you're waiting to see what happens when they do. Um, and one of the best things that I think that I really liked about this book is that it had, because it takes place in Montreal, it has little snippets of French, which for those of you who don't know, I actually speak French. Um, so it was really cool to read a book that has little bits of French in it, and I can actually understand what there, what is being said. So that was really fun for me. Um, I would like to note that there, um, I would like to give a content warning about this book. It does touch on some pretty difficult uh, concepts. Um, it does talk about child abuse, it talks about sexual and physical abuse, um, it also talks about drug addiction and miscarriages, and it does have some strong language. So if you are not fond of any of those topics, um, I, I would highly uh, recommend you take caution when reading this book. Um, other than that, honestly, even with the, the difficult content, I gave this book a 4 out of 5. I absolutely loved this book. It was an emotional roller coaster and it was a very fast read. I think I read this book in like 2 or 3 days. It didn't take me very long at all. and. I, I ended up I ended up crying at the end of this book. Like I ended up getting frustrated. I ended up getting so excited. It it took me through the emotions of the story, and you get to know these characters so well. Um, yeah, I would highly highly recommend this book. Anyway, um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me again. This is the Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill, and you should go to your local library and check it out. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'm going to be more regular about my postings, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you. Bye!